Hello everybody, Professor J here, and today we're going to talk about accounting for bonds payable. Before we jump into the actual calculations, however, it'd be a good idea to actually know what is a bond. Well, essentially a bond is, a, is debt. It is a way for companies to raise money. You know very well about stocks, but stocks are equity. They are not debt. Stock is when you actually give away part of the farm. You say, here's a piece of my corporation in exchange for your money. However, a bond, when you issue a bond, when a corporation issues a bond, they say, hey, I'll pay you interest if you give me your money. So it's essentially debt. It is a debt or a loan there's a lot of four-letter words that go with bond, such as debt and loan, but also note. When you see a note payable, that's debt as well. Your student uh, loans, those are essentially, in a way, they're like a bond. You have to make interest payments on the money that you borrowed. And then at the end, you have to give the money back. Well, a bond is very similar to your student loans. So, let's pretend we are right here, right now, and we issue a four-year bond. So, one, two, three, four years that we have to pay 10% interest to the people who gave us their money. It's a $1,000 bond, meaning they gave us $1,000 and we agreed to pay 10% interest. Now, whenever interest is mentioned, it is an annual amount, a yearly amount. You've probably seen that acronym called APR. That is annual percentage rate. And we always quote interest in annual rates, regardless of how often it's paid. It could be paid daily, but the rate that's quoted will be an annual rate. So, Let's say we're paying 10% on the $1,000. So what happens? At the beginning, from the corporation's point of view, we gain $1,000. So it's positive to us. We have $1,000. At the end of year one, however, we have to pay out 10% of face value of that bond, which is 1000 That will be $100. That's a negative cash flow for us. We have to do that again at time two, at the end of year three, and again at the end of year four. But at the end of year four, we also have to give back the money we borrowed. So the cash flows of a bond payable is positive money at the beginning and then a stream of cash flows out. So that is what a bond looks like. But there's one little caveat. Bonds essentially pay their interest, not annually, but semi-annually, twice a year. So how does that work? Essentially, you pay half the interest twice as many times. So it really isn't going to look like what I just drew. It's going to look like this. Instead of what you see in black, we're going to get this, and we're still going to have to do that. But instead of the minus 100s once a year, it's going to be minus 50, minus 50 every half year. Essentially, we pay half the interest, 5%, twice as often, 8 times instead of 4 times. So the stream of cash flows will actually look like what you see in blue there. So that's a quick and dirty on what a bond is. It's a loan with a specific set of cash flows. So now let's go into how to calculate what we put on our accounting records. Okay, let's say our corporation decides that on January 1st we're going to issue four-year bonds. They're worth $10,000 and we're 
going to pay 8% interest. Now this 8% interest is to try and entice people to give us their $10,000. Hey, you give me $10,000, I'll pay you 8% interest, plus you get your money back at the end of four years. Now, if the bond, which has a face value of $10,000, sells for $10,000, then it is called selling at par, which is also called selling at a hundred. Right here. This is par value. Par and face value of the bond mean the same amount. But what if nobody is all that interested in giving me $10,000 and getting a percent for it? Why would that happen? That would happen because I'm paying 8%, but everybody else, which we will call the market, is paying 10% for the same $10,000. So you out there as Joe Investor say, oh look, I can donate to Professor Jakovich's corporation and give her my $10,000 and she'll give me 8%. Oh, but look out here, everybody else, I give them the same amount of money, $10,000, and they're giving me 10% back on my money. Professor J, you are out of luck. So what happens is nobody wants my pathetic little 8% bond. And what happens is the price goes down. I have to entice them. So instead of it selling at $10,000, it's going to sell for what's called a discount. The price went down. Here it's sold at 96. When it sells at 96, that means it sold at 96% of face value. Huh. Not good for us, but at least we got some money. So we'll do the math in a second. And then the last situation where it says at 102. What would cause that to happen? Well, first of all, when it sells above 100, that's called selling at a premium. Everybody wanted my bond so that they were willing to give me 102% of face value, more than $10,000 to get my $10,000 bond. Well, when would that happen? That means I'm paying 8%. But the market is only paying six or five or four or something less than I'm paying. So I look great and I'm happy with that. Over here, that's a sad face. I'm not going to get much. So that's the definitions of selling at par, at discount, or at premium. So now let's do the math that goes with those.